Good morning, everyone. It's time for chapel. I hope you're all ready. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes. I'm going to get, pray to get our day started, okay? Dear God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for bringing us all here safely. Help us to have a good day. Help us to listen to this chapel and to understand, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so today I'm going to tell you a story about a man named Daniel. And Daniel was a man who believed in God, and he always tried to do what was right. But some bad men wanted to get Daniel into trouble. So they had King Darius make a law that any person who prayed to anyone or anything except King Darius would be thrown into a den of hungry lions. But before this law was made, Daniel had gone to his home three times every day to pray. He had gone upstairs to a room that had a window that looked toward Jerusalem where God's temple was. And there, at the open window, Daniel had prayed to God. Anyone passing by could see him, but Daniel did not care. He would do what he knew was right. But now, what would Daniel do? The new law said that he couldn't pray to God. If he went upstairs to pray by the open window, the men who were watching him would see it and tell the king. Do you think that Daniel would keep the window closed so that no one could see him pray? Do you think he would say, well, it's only for 30 days. I'll just pray quietly so that no one will hear me until after the law is over. No, that's not what Daniel did. After he heard about the new law, Daniel walked right upstairs to the window in his house opened it wide and began to pray. The jealous leaders were watching outside Daniel's house. As soon as they saw him kneeling down and praying to his God, they hurried off to the king. King Darius, they said, didn't you make a law that for 30 days, any person who prays to anyone or anything except you will be thrown into the lion's den? Yes, I did, King Darius replied. I made a law that cannot be changed. We saw Daniel praying, they told him. He paid no attention to you, King Darius, or to your law. He still prays three times a day to his God. Suddenly, King Darius knew why the men made the law. He knew that the law was just to get Daniel into trouble. King Darius wondered what he could do to save Daniel. For the rest of the day, he tried to find any way he could to save Daniel from being thrown to the lions. Those jealous leaders came to King Darius again. Remember, O king, they said firmly, that none of the laws of this land can be changed. King Darius knew they were right. Sadly, he gave the order to have Daniel arrested and thrown into the den of lions. The lions were kept in an opening in the ground, like a cave or a basement. The soldiers brought Daniel and took him right to the opening and lowered him into the den. King Darius stood at the opening and called to his friend Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, will deliver thee. A big stone was rolled over the opening to the lion's den. The king pressed the top of his ring into some mud or wax so that it left the king's own sign on the rock. Anyone who moved the rock would have to answer to the king. No one would be able to help Daniel escape. Only God could help Daniel. And what do you suppose happened next? Did the lions growl and bite Daniel? No, Daniel had obeyed God and put his trust in him. And now God took care of Daniel. The lions came close to Daniel, but they did not roar and they did not bite. They acted as tame and friendly as a pet cat or kitten. How could this be? God, who loved Daniel, sent his angel to watch over Daniel and close the lion's mouth. Daniel might have even smiled and curled up next to the lions for, to sleep for the night. However, King Darius could not sleep. All he could think about was Daniel. As soon as morning came, King Darius hurried to the lion's den. His soldiers moved the stone away. Then, in a voice filled with fear, the king called, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve kept you safe from the lions? From inside the den came Daniel's voice, O oh, king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me at all. How happy the king was to know that his friend was safe. He ordered his soldiers to lift Daniel up out of the lion's den. 
Daniel did not have a scratch on him. Daniel had trusted and obeyed God, and God had kept him safe. King Darius then made a new law. The law said that all of the people should worship the God of Daniel because he is the living God. So in our story today, Daniel trusted God and he believed that no matter what happened, if he prayed, God would always take care of him. He knew that praying was the right thing to do. And we know that God has given us a special way of talking to him. And we may not be able to call God on the phone or send him a letter, but we can pray. And why should we pray? Because it makes our relationship with God stronger. Could you imagine trying to have a best friend, but never talking to them? That wouldn't work very well, would it? Prayer is seeking God and his direction for our lives. Praying also helps us keep out of trouble. When you pray, you are talking to God and spending time getting to know him. God wants us to pray and spend time getting to know him, but sometimes it's hard to know what to pray about or how to pray. So it's great that we have stories to help us learn how and when to pray. When we pray, there's some different things that we can do. Praying is not only one thing, it's lots of things. It's any time we talk to God. So when we're praying, we can praise God, which means telling God how great he is, talking about all the great things that God has done. We can give thanks, which is thanking God for all the things that he has done and the things that he has given to us, like our families, our toys, the Bible, anything you can think of that God has given to you that you want to say thank you for. We can say we're sorry. We can tell God the things that we've done that we know he would not want us to do. We can tell him we're sorry and we can ask him to forgive us. We can ask for things. We can ask for things we want, but we can also ask for things that we need. We can ask God to make sure that we have a house and food and clothes and all the things that we need to, to be healthy and safe. And we also can pray for others. We ask God to help other people. We can pray for our family, our friends, people in our church, and all the other people in the world who need to hear about Jesus. We can use our bodies to help us remember things to pray about. We can remember with our toes to pray for the way that God would want us to walk. Pray that we would always walk in God's path and follow him. Our knees remind us to tell God when we haven't prayed and when we haven't knelt down and prayed, but we have tried to do things on our own. Our tummy can help us remember to thank God for all that he gives to us, including our food. Our hands help us to remember to pray for the ways that we can serve people. That means we can help people. Ask God to give us the chance to help our neighbors and our friends using our hands. Our ears help us to remember to pray that, they, that we could hear God's voice above all others and that they would listen, that we would listen to the needs of all the people around us. Our mouth can help us to remember to pray that God would speak the words that we need to hear and that we would speak the words that other people need to hear. Our eyes Help us to pray that we would seek God and God would give them us the eyes to see other people and that we might know um, that they are known and loved by God and that we can help to tell them. And our head reminds us to pray that we would think of others and think good thoughts and never be afraid. So why should we pray? It's pretty simple. We pray so that we can talk to God and that we can get his direction for our lives. God is so good and he will help us when we're happy, when we're sad or sick, or even when we're in trouble. God will give us wisdom, strength, and understanding if we only ask him. In fact, God is willing to give us many good things as long as we ask for them. God answers our prayers with signs through the Holy Spirit and in his word, the Bible. And when we pray, our relationship with God grows. Remember that we can pray anytime and anywhere. 
When at, we're at school, we make sure we bow our heads and we close our eyes and we say our prayers and we thank God for our food and for our day. We pray for our friends if they're sick and not feeling good. But we don't always have to bow our heads and close our eyes when we're praying. It's important to do that in class and in church. But if you are playing outside with some friends and you're feeling scared, you can stop right where you are and say, God, please help me not to feel scared. And God will hear you if you say it out loud or if you just think it in your head. But you say, God, I really need you right now. I'm really scared. Or I fell down and got hurt and God, it hurts so bad. I wish that you would help me feel better. And God will hear you. And God sends people to help you. God gives you your mommies and your daddies and your teachers and people at church and, any, and your grandmas and grandpas and whoever helps to take care of you are special people that God has put in your life to help keep you safe. Because God can't come down and give you a band-aid when you hurt your knee, but he can give you someone who will, who will help you. And you can always, always ask God for help because he's always watching and he's always listening. So remember, no matter what anybody else says or does, you can always pray and you can always talk to God. Okay, let's bow our heads and close our eyes one more time for a prayer, okay? Dear God, thank you for this lesson. Help us to remember that we can pray and we can talk to you anytime, that you're always watching us and you're always protecting us, Lord. Help us to have a good rest of our day. Help us to listen and obey. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, now it's fun time. It's time for the student of the week. This is students who have worked super hard to do a good job in class, okay? So our student of the week for K3, Mrs. Miller's class, is Haley. Good job. All right. Student of the week for K4, Mrs. Libernini's class, is Tiana. Good work. K5A, Miss Romero's class, your student of the week is Persephone. All right. Good job. And K5B, Mrs. Williams' class. Your student of the week is Jotnil. All right, that's awesome. Good job to everyone who earned student of the week this week. And everyone else, make sure you're keeping your good habits and you're being kind and you're working hard so maybe you can be student of the week next week. All right, thanks so much for paying attention and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.